Hey everyone, we're working on getting Steve's camera up and Anthony Leon is uh, working on getting called in. He was on and then his audio went out. So he'll be joining us here shortly, but we we'll get started so we're not keeping you waiting. So let's dive into it. So everyone, uh, I'm Mike Hanlon, along with Dion Malish. You know, we're the owners of Realty One Group Gold Standard. And we're honored and privileged to be here today in this amazing panel of agents that we put together uh, for what we're calling just agents helping agents. It's been truly inspiring seeing agents from all over, every brokerage, helping each other, sharing advice, guidance, you know, what they're hearing from their buyers and sellers, and just helping us all navigate this together. You know, as a realtor community, together we will get through this, and we are stronger together. So I my privilege and honor to, to be, you know, talking to these, you know, fellow agents who have been extremely successful in their careers and, you know, graciously willing to share with you guys out there. Uh, in hopes of helping, you know, agents you know, uh, need to hear this message. So the kind of game plan today is I'm just here to kind of well, ask some questions. Say, say on my thing that all, the panel is there. all these are uh, full. Let's have some fun. Let's uh, be real. And let's just share together and grow together. So uh, we're going to start off with just the agents introduce themselves, and then we'll get to know them a little bit more uh, for those out there who don't know them. And then we'll kind of dive into the questions. So we'll start up top here. If, uh, Jen, uh, if you want to, you know, start, let us know a little about yourself. Uh, and then we'll just kind of work down the, the the bottom of the screen and over over to Steve. And when Anthony comes on, we'll get Anthony in here. Jen, take Sounds it away. good. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm in my office, not my daughter's room, since everybody asks. I have a bright pink office. Um, my name is Jen Mascaro. I am with Coldwell Banker in Murraysville. Um, I've been an agent with Coldwell Banker my entire real estate career. Um, I'm just starting my sixth year. Um, last year was my best year. It was just a breakthrough year for me. Um, I sold a little over 19 million. I had 99 transactions and 65 listings. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Jen Krause. I'm with Howard Hanna in Collier Township. Um, I am beginning my fifth year with Howard Hanna. Um, it'll be this July and, um, I've done about just at 75 million in my career thus far. Um, last year I did 21 million with 66 and a half transactions. Can't forget that. And, um, I'm really glad to be here today. Brian. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Zaper with Pyatt Sotheby's International Realty. Uh, first off, I wanted to thank you all for attending and putting this together. I think it's awesome to see five agents from five different brokerages um, come together like this. So I'm excited to hopefully learn some new things and share some ideas. Um, last year, um, I did a little over 12 million um, in 56 transactions and I've been in business since 2016. And Steve? Steve, can you hear us? <laughs> like we said earlier, but the women are kicking butt on our technology. Us guys are struggling. Uh, <laughs> we'll let Steve try to get back on there. But so again, we're just kind of you know get to know you guys a little bit more, kind of learn where you came from, how you got started, and then we'll kind of dive into more of the relevant questions and you know things we're seeing now and in, in, in the environment we're in so uh so i think what's the same flow the same flow we'll just kind of go jen jen brian once steve gets on we'll have them jump in and anthony's trying to call in it's telling him there's too many people on here which uh is awesome but there's a lot of people on here but we're trying to get anthony patched in so uh we know what you guys did last year uh Phenomenal uh, production all around. So just, but just tell us about your first year in real estate. Tell us about how you got into real estate. Did, did you fall into it? Was a family member involved? Just where you came from and just your first year kind of summarizing your, your first year in business. Yeah, so I um, I started in real estate. I was in corporate forever. I was working downtown for 10 years, um, taking the bus down and back. Um, but when my son was born, he was born um, with hearing loss. So he wears hearing aids and we were dropping him off at daycare at um, seven, six o'clock in the morning because we worked seven to four. And then we weren't getting him till 5.30 or six o'clock at night after you know we were fighting through traffic. 
So we did that, you know, and then after, oh, there's Anthony. Then after, you know, we were picking him up from daycare, we were taking him to speech therapy, um, early intervention, and all of these appointments. So we were seeing our son for a half hour a night. So I did that for two years, and I finally said to my husband, I have to do something. I cannot work in a corporate environment when he was sick. People would talk about you, and it. I just, I couldn't do the corporate thing anymore. So I, my best friend's mom was an agent at um, Coldwell Banker in Murraysville, which is where I still am. And she kept saying, you need to do this. You'd be really good at it. So I quit my job, cold turkey. It was really scary. Um, I got into my real estate classes, found out I was pregnant with my daughter who also was born with, with hearing loss. So um, finished up classes, got my license. Um, a couple months into my real estate career, I found out I was pregnant again. Um, so Austin came along and he was okay, no hearing loss there. Um, but the first year was, it was hard. I had a two-year-old, or well, I should say three-year-old, and then a newborn and a, or a baby and a newborn. So I had to make it work. There was no other choice but to make real estate work. And I went hard. Um, I, I called people all the time. I emailed. I was probably really annoying. Um, I was living the life of still making a salary of 60 to 70,000 when in reality I made $20,000 my first year. Um, but by, Halfway through my second year, I was able to pay off all the debt that I got us into, which was about forty thousand. Um, I was living a wine life and a water salary, um, but I I stayed really dedicated. Um, I I just didn't give up, um, and I think in this business, it's really easy to give up when business doesn't fall into your lap. Um, but I went out there and I got it and I am at a point, I don't want to say where business falls in my lap, but I'm at a point, you know, five years in where people are coming back from the first year and they want to buy a bigger house and I'm getting tons of referrals. Um, and if you're a good agent, those referrals will, will come to you. Um, you just have to be, you have to go above and above and beyond. There are a lot of agents in this business. And I'd, I'd hate to say it, but there's a lot of bad ones too. So if you stand out, you are going to get those referrals and you're going to get, um, and you're going to be a top agent. We'll, we'll, this, we'll dive into that a little bit later about how you guys are nurturing your past clients to, to you know, ensure referrals. So how, you know, everybody has a little different, you know, approach to that, but that's a great thing to dive into a little bit later. So thanks for bringing that up. And uh, Jen, how did, how did you get into real estate? So I, um, after college, I worked at a small public relations firm. Um, my degree's in journalism, so I was pretty pumped to be working in my field. Um, it was a four-person firm. I was the only female there, and I was basically in charge of getting coffee, um, which anyone that knows me knows that's not a great fit, mostly because I don't really know how to make coffee, but for other reasons as well. Um, so I was working nights and weekends in retail uh, because I always worked retail like kind of growing up, that was always my thing. And um, after years with Victoria's Secret and American Eagle as store manager for them, um, you know, first part-time while working in PR and then as an assistant manager, store manager, I kind of thought that's what I was gonna be doing is just be in retail and work those kind of crazy hours, which I know we kind of have anyway now. Um, and I, back in the day, not to age myself, on Monster, uh, where we used to look for jobs, there was a posting for, um a sales rep and and i applied because i was kind of over i fell asleep at christmas eve church the one year um and you know got scolded by my mom even though i was in my mid-20s and uh said it's time for a change so i made my application um and interviewed with a like management recruitment firm so i didn't really know who i was interviewing with but it turns out it was Heartland Homes, which is a, a new construction builder, which I'm sure all of you know. But back then it was a family owned company. It wasn't under the NVR umbrella that it's under now. So long story short, I ended up doing a new construction, which was such a blessing, such a game changer for my life because it was a, it was a career I never really even thought of for myself. Um, 
my husband was pumped. He wanted to, he wanted to build a house immediately when I started there. And I said, like, hold up, let's make sure I know what I'm doing. Let's make sure I can do this first. Um, and I could, and I did, and it was great. Um, I learned the ins and outs of construction. Uh, I learned sales techniques. Um, the training that Heartland had back then was, was awesome. So uh, I guess I, once I got to new construction, I took a more direct route into general real estate. Jen, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There we can hear you now. It, it, it unmuted her. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Technology is. Go ahead, Jen. Keep talking. You should be okay. I have no idea where you stopped hearing me. <laughs> so, Heartland Homes, new construction, great fit. Um, we were bought out, things changed, the corporate structure changed a lot. And at that point I had kids. Um, so for me, um, it was a very regimented schedule. You have to report to the model. You also have to be available nights and weekends. I know some of you guys on here watching were in the same boat as I was. Um, so I just kind of decided to take the plunge, go into the general real estate side and take advantage of all the things I had learned. And, um, it was a great decision. Awesome. How, how long were you at Heartland? How many years? Uh, eight years. Eight years. Wow. Brian? So uh, my story is a little bit different. Um, my first year in real estate, um, I essentially started when I was 19 years old. And oddly enough, I wanted to do this since I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid, I used to make my own for sale signs. I carried around a briefcase with the old home guides books from the grocery stores and would ride around on my bike in my parents' yard, sticking makeshift signs everywhere. So truly you can say I'm living the dream now, which I don't think everyone says that about real estate. Um, but I was at Pitt for a little over a year and a half and just realized it wasn't for me. And I knew what I truly wanted to do. So I took the risk and got into real estate. Um, I had a lot of backlash saying, you know, you're gonna be too young to be successful. And that just sort of lit a fire under me. Uh, to work even harder. Um, so I'd say like my first year in the business, like everyone was definitely a struggle. I was fighting the whole age aspect of it as well, um, amongst just the hardships of beginning um, in real estate. So a funny story that I say, um, one of the questions you had asked was, when did you kind of feel like you knew you made it in real estate? Um, so it took me back to a day I was probably about six to eight months into the business and I was driving down Route 30. It was a warm fall day. I had the windows down and I got a call from an agent that I had been negotiating a deal with that the deal came together. And I remember hanging up the phone and just coincidentally, if you know me, um, this is pretty suiting, but the song Independent Woman by Destiny's Child happened to be on. And I sort of had a little jam session at the red light and thought to myself, yeah, at that point, I had only closed about three deals and I had four pending and one listing, which at that time um, seemed like a lot to me. Um, but it was in that moment where I realized I can really do this. Um, this isn't just, you know, me taking a chance or a hobby. This is a career and a business that I'm building. Um, so from that moment, I kind of, like I said, put things together and was more inspired than ever before. That's awesome. Anthony, can can we hear you now? I, I hope so. Can you yeah, hear me? we got you. We're good. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah, glad to be on here. I uh, obviously apologize, couldn't do the whole introduction thing, but um, I'm coming up on 10 years in the business, um, over 120 million in, in total sales volume. Um, so it's a little bit of backstory there. I'm with Remax Select out of Cranberry. Um, so, but but to just jump forward here and, and, and um, you know, answer the same question here as the panel. So for me, I came from corporate sales. Um, I used to actually, and, and it was an inside sales position with a little bit of outside activity. Um, to be honest, I hated it. I was selling uh, electrical components. I knew nothing about it at all. I had a 
continue to try to fake it till I make it and eventually said, I just can't do this anymore. So I used to um, bring my lunch every day. And when everybody would go out and grab lunch at local restaurants or do what they would do, I would make calls to all my clients in the car from 12 to 1. And uh, I would use the company um, copiers and scanners, and I would just do all of my business there as much as I could with any break in the action I possibly had. I utilized every lunch break, and I did this for about uh, a little over a year. Um, and then also, as soon as I got out at 5, 5.30, I was chilling out to appointments, getting home at 8.30, 9, 9.30, and then every weekend I was doing it. So I essentially was moonlighting real estate um, you know, and, and just doing the two together. And in about a year into doing that, um, my girlfriend at the time, my wife, basically said, hey, you need to make a decision one way or the other. And I said, you're right. I'm going to jump into this with those feet. And I did that. And it's been a blessing and an amazing run. And um, from there, things really just took off. And, uh, you know, just truly uh, appreciate and blessed to be in this arena every day. I really do believe that we deal with a lot of crap, but at the end of the day, we have such an amazing, um, you know, career and, and opportunity and, and being a realtor is, is really amazing. And, 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 you know, as cheesy as it is or cliche as it is, I mean, the sky truly is the limit for all of us. I'm a huge believer in there's a huge pie out there and there's as much of it as we all want. Um, and, you know, we're all playing in the same sandbox. So make the transactions enjoyable working with one another and, you know, whatever you want to hit as far as limit or volume or production, you truly can do that. It's just, you know, all in your approach and how you get there. That's great. Uh, Dion, is Steve, Steve on? I think he's able to talk. Steve? Yes. I, I, can you hear me? Yeah, we, yep, hear we can hear you. We all see, we can see your face. Pretty face. You don't know, really, I, well, the truth be told, Mike's just blocking my face because I'm the ugliest of the panelists, and he just <laughs> wants to make sure that you're not grossed out by, by my looks. But I appreciate being a part of it. It's great listening to everybody's stories. Uh, I, I started off at one of the, the big box stores, and uh, they, after being there uh, three years and sort of being told I can't do it part-time because I, I also have a full-time job um, for the working for the state police. And uh was told I couldn't make it, and I was able to become their their third highest salesperson in the office, um, supposedly doing it part time. And I tried negotiating my commission because uh, I feel like you know we live in the world of negotiation, and I was unable to do that. So I then I went to a company that uh, they went, and their structure was when you hit a certain amount of money, uh, like in commission as a cap, then you got a hundred percent of your transaction. So that was really really attractive to me, especially coming from a place where I was losing so much of the commission. And then I realized while I was there that that structure is really good for uh, getting an agent to that certain number. And then once that agent hits that number, really you're not as attracted to them any as attractive to that company anymore. So uh, that's after being there for two years, I, I got to be uh, ranked second in sales in Westmoreland County. I did 16 over 16 million that year. That was last year. And then I, I, got tangled up with really one and it was like a blessing for me the way it works uh, for our structure and then also the fact that I feel like I have a support network like I have right now um, with Mike and Dion and I was 2.55 million ahead of where we were up until uh, the government basically put us on a shutdown so that's kind of uh, my real estate journey and I, I got into this because I actually got divorced and I had some spare time on my hands but I didn't have my kids and I wanted to make good decisions instead of making bad decisions. So I, I fill my time with work. So uh, I basically get off work every day and go to work. And, and I went from selling zero houses seven years ago to, uh, you know, did like 85 transactions last year. Great. And, you know, it, it's like Anthony said, there's a huge pie out there. And we all share the same mindset here. And we all come from different backgrounds. You know, Jen, you know, coming from corporate uh, and, you know, diving in, you know, 100% in the real estate. Steve still working part-time real estate uh, and having another job. You know, that's no matter where you're coming from or what your situation is, there is huge potential out there uh, getting with the right mentor, getting with the right coaches in the right environment to, to achieve your goal. So that's great hearing from every, you know, all, everybody's backstory here. So uh, let's dive into uh, where most of your business comes from now that you guys are all established agents. You've been in it. Uh, you're big producers. So uh, Jen Krause is up top now. So we'll kind of you know, start start with you. Where does most of your business uh, come from uh, today? 
So definitely, definitely from my sphere and referrals. I mean, that is my bread and butter. Um, I, it's very rare that it's not from a referral, one of my past clients, you know, or someone in my sphere. Um, I do have a pretty good um, hold on the township where I live, where my kids are in the schools. Um, that was, you know, by design. Um, and I think that's one of the things I would tell new agents, and I'm sorry if I'm getting ahead or what have mm -hmm. you, but is um, I think the best advice I got when I came over to Hannah, because I was like super pumped to like market every community I ever sold for Heartland, which was from Mars and Cranberry down 79 into Washington County. And I was like, I'm going to hit all of them. I'm going to sell all of it. And like in theory, that's great, right? And I have sold you know, quite a few of my old neighborhoods and whatnot, but that's such a huge, huge like area, right? So the best advice I got when I started um, in general real estate was pick an area that feeds you, right? So like pick it. Is it where you're, where you live, where your kids are in school, where your husband works, where you volunteer, you know, your kids sports, like what is it? Where, where are you? Where do you spend your time? And, and, and farm that and work that area to make it your feeder area, right? So once I kind of narrowed it down and focused, um, that really is what helped me build my business and my brand in my specific township. And then from there, the referral business just started coming in. And then it's like, hey, my sister has a house to sell. Do you do Upper St. Clair? Or hey, do you do this? So yeah, of course, I, I, do, I do a lot of places. But um, even if you have one feeder, it, it expands from there. So I think that's really important. I think it helps you guys uh, stay a little more focused um, and even pick neighborhoods if you're gonna go you know, into an area. Um, be specific, be calculated. Um, and that's the biggest thing for me. And like I said, that referral business is so important because remember like every sale you have, every happy customer means more clients, right? So even if somebody's kind of a pain, I mean, every once in a while we get those, right? Um, it's important to do everything you can to make that transaction go as smoothly as possible because if they're happy, that means residual business for you down the road. And that is what it's all about. That's great. Yeah, I think the move, like I said, focusing allows you to be, you know, specific and also gets consistency. You got to be consistent with your marketing, with your touching, with, you know, if it's too big, there's no way you can stay in top of mind or reach them at enough frequency. So great. Uh, Brian, how about you? Where's your, where's your business coming from? So my business is pretty split. Um, similar to what Jen was saying, referral and sphere is definitely huge for me. Um, entering into my fifth year now, um, I'm starting to see a lot of people from my first year or second year come back to me um, or just past clients in general referring their friends and family to me. So if you do good by people, they'll do good by you and uh, send it back to you. Um, but the other half of my business, probably almost about 50% of it comes from social media for me. Um, if you do follow me, you see that I'm pretty present on there. Um, between Facebook and Instagram are my two main um, sources there. I constantly am getting DMs probably multiple times a week from people I either went to high school with, knew from college, or met somewhere along the lines. They aren't people that I was super close friends with or anything, uh, but they just follow me and I'm top of mind the second they wanna buy or sell real estate or even anyone they know. So for example, a college friend that I met my freshman year of college had not seen um, since 2014, um, referred me her parents who were relocating back to Pittsburgh and um, they were a great referral. Um, so that's happening for me constantly. Um, I stay really well connected with people from my high school and that's a huge um, source as well. But again, they all kind of contact me through Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, uh, direct messages and coincidentally early on in my career I actually sold a house literally over snapchat I had met someone um, on St. Patrick's Day with friends it was a friend of a friend and they connected with me on snapchat and it was early on in my career and I had posted a snapchat story of walking through a really cool property um, that I was touring and they messaged me on snapchat said, hey, I think I want to buy a house. I um, messaged back my lender's contact info. They went and got pre-approved. And we literally set up our first meetings through Snapchat Messenger. And then finally, when we met in person, I was like, you know, we should probably exchange numbers at this point. And they ended up being one of my early on sales. 
Um, and then they referred me a ton of business and their friends, you know, continue to reach out to me through social media. Awesome. And you, you got to talk about your TikTok. That's the most entertaining thing I, I usually go to daily. Uh, but I think well, the that's important thing is, you know, that you, you, people get to get to know your personality. You know, the, the walls are down. I know you're personable. You'd be easy to talk to. So I think that's very important for the social media aspect is, you know, all those platforms get to, they get to know the real you. So it's, it's a lot easier to ask you questions and reach out to you. So, but your TikTok is, is top, top notch. Uh, so, uh, Anthony, how about, how about you? Where's your business coming from? Yeah. So um, I would venture to say 80 to 90% of my business is going to be referral sphere based. Um, I really just, I do put all my eggs in the basket there. Um, the other 10%, you know, it probably trickles in from social media. You know, I agree with that. Both Jen and Brian, um, you know, um, referral is everything, number one. Number two, social media, you know, on occasion I get some people that will reach out, whether it's uh, Instagram or Facebook, and, you know, look to do some work. Um, for me, I decided about a year and a half ago to eliminate um, – all ties with Zillow and some of the other companies out there. Not bashing it. I, I get it. It works for others. For me, I just decided if I can allocate those funds um, and put it towards other forms of advertising and also, hey, I can do X amount of lunches, dinners, drinks, whatever a month with this money. I just think it pays dividends way greater than getting, um, you know, email blast from candy crush one two three four at yahoo and i call it and it's a you know a busy signal so for me it was just a time waster um you know for every you know 40 emails i got maybe one was legit and then not to mention i got tired of the fact that you know i always joke and say they think we're like volunteer firefighters but it's like hey i want to see this house can you meet me there in 10 minutes well no you know i have a life and clients too so for me i really just have decided to eliminate that from my business and I got to say, it paid dividends big time. Um, and it's really just simplifying things. I think sometimes, especially newer agents getting into the business, all of a sudden you just have all these grand ideas and you want to just go from A to Z really quick. Um, you know, take care of the people that truly look out for you. Um, make that list of 10, 20 people, of people you know will really give your name out, will really look out for you and help you to grow your business. Start there, then build it. Um, because we love to think that everybody's looking out for us and we love to think that everybody wants to see us succeed and do well and prosper. But at the end of the day, if you really get down to it, you'll notice real quickly that, uh, you know, that list is probably smaller than what you really think it is. So focus on those people and it will pay dividends. Great advice. All right, Jen, how about you? Can you hear us? I think we got you now. Yeah. You said, Jen, you're self muted, it says. Okay, there we go. There we go. It was saying I was muted by the organizer. No. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't blame you. My husband tries to mute me all the time. <laughs> So for me, I mean, a lot of my business in the beginning um, was from open houses and floor time. So anytime there was open floor time at my office, I would do it um, because I was sitting in the office anyways. So I would sit at that front desk and I would just answer those calls and I would pick up those. It was mainly buyers and that's okay. Um, and then open houses. For two years straight, I was at an open house every single Sunday. Um, if you're not doing open houses, you really need to figure out why you're not doing open houses. Um, I don't do as many anymore because I can't handle, um, all of the buyers. So I give a lot of my open houses to, um, the newer agents or any agent that wants to, to host an open house. Um, and then now most of my business is coming from referrals. And like Jen, I really saturated my local market. So um, I, I do do Zillow. Um, and the reason I do, do Zillow is because I want my name, I want my face on that zip code. So when somebody thinks of, um, I don't want to say where I live because I don't want anyone trying to steal my spotlight. <laughs> when somebody thinks, I'll say it, plum, um, I want them to think of Jen Mascaro. So when I'm, you know, when you, if you 
look me up or you look up Plum Realtor, most of the time I'm going to pop up. Um, reviews are huge. So I make sure every single client reviews me. I'm kind of annoying about it, but I get those reviews. I mean, I have over a hundred reviews on Zillow. So when I, I would say probably, I couldn't even give you a number of how much business I got last year from people saying, well, I looked up, um, I looked you up on Zillow, you're the most reviewed, so I picked you. Um, and I am the number one agent in my market. So um, that's what I always wanted to do. Um, I wanted to be, Stacey Rollo is the number one agent in Penn Hills. I always say I want to be the Stacey Rollo of Plum. Um, you just, I, I'm very active in this area. So, and I wanted, I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to spend more time with my kids. That's why I got into this business. So I didn't want to be driving all over God's creation. So if I get a buyer out in the North Hills, I'm giving it to Joe Hobbs out in the North Hills office because that's my girl and that's where she works. I don't know anything in the North Hills. Um, and then another thing with the Zillow is even though I'm paying for those leads, I actually don't take any of them. I refer them to other agents unless it's a, a listing, then I take that. Um, and the reason I do that is because I want my name or I want my face on Zillow but I don't have the bandwidth to take all the buyers. So I collect a referral fee and um, I just give them away. And it, it pays for me. It, I mean, it, it pays for the Zillow leads and then some, so I'm okay doing that. Um, and I know, I know a lot of people hate Zillow, but I just, if you can't beat them, join them. So that's how I feel about it. Now, two years ago, I was getting a huge return on my investment with them. Um, not so much anymore. Great, Steve. Steve there? I have him on speaker right here. I was going to try to do it. He just somehow he got knocked out and now he's he's definitely technically challenged here today. I mean, the state police put you on TV all the time. You're, you're the like media guy. Come on. <laughs> can anyone hear him? Go ahead and talk, Steve. I can hear you just fine. Can you hear him? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, so the question is the question is that how what where does your business come from right now? So to tell everyone a little bit about where most of your business comes from. Sure. So, uh, they, my obviously, I heard fear of influence. I got to hear that part. That definitely is you're going to be your go-to to try and get your business. I create a lot of business through Facebook. I don't know if somebody had said that, but I, I create a lot of business through Facebook. Um, I, I do uh, videos and I do some uh, all my listings, I do like coming soon stuff. I know they're putting a restriction on that. So um, I, I do a coming soon. Like I actually have a format of how I lay houses out. And uh, I, using social media, I, I can't believe it. I'm 46 years old and I'm talking about social media. It's the last thing I thought I, I would be talking about. But the job I have with the law enforcement, they actually sent me some classes to try and help solve crime and, and do some things of that nature with social media and, and how to get exposure. So I've tried to transition some of the things that I was taught on that regard and I use it into my, my real estate world. And the other thing I do is I take every single possible conversation I could ever have with someone and within 20 seconds, I turn into real estate. When somebody asks me how I'm doing, I say, well, me, geez, I'm doing whatever I, you know, whatever I'm doing. If I'm having a good day, bad day, I always tell people basically the truth. But in real estate, I'm doing really well. Or, you know, this is going on in real estate, and I transition every single conversation into real estate. I think that's very important, especially if you're a newer agent or you like like me. I'm kind of branded as I have another job. You have to program everybody that's around you to think, wait, he's not this, or she's not that, she's not the bartender, she's not the uh, stay at home mom. She's not the just school teacher. She is the real estate agent. She also is a real estate agent. He's also, and you have to try and tweak all of your people's brains so that that's the first thing they think of. Yep, mm, you have to top of mind. And if it comes to sphere of influence, you know, like Jen said, you know that you treat them right. You 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 do a great job. You leave them with a great experience. They're going to turn into more business, and it doesn't cost anything. Uh, you know. The market you know to convert them uh 
And with social media now, guys, especially now in the environment we're in, people are living online. If you're not on Facebook doing videos, getting yourself out there so people get to know the real you, you're missing one of the most opportune times in, in all of history because we're at home on our computers all day long. So if you're not on video now, guys, you need to start as soon as you hang up, you need to get on video and get out there and let the world know who you are. Let them know what you're about and your personality. Uh, so that's great. Sphere of Influence, Facebook, some Zillow. Uh, now, quick question, just you know, a yes or no is, do any, you know, most of you have a huge sphere of influence uh, referral base. Do you guys do client appreciations? Do you do any special events, you know, once, twice a year or anything for your, your clients specifically? Yeah, yeah I, I do. I actually do a um, client appreciation party every January. Um, and it's very laid back. Um, I spent $1,000 on it this year. Um, it's a, we did it at Rick Sports Bar in Murraysville. Uh, I keep saying we, I have an assistant, her name's Melissa, and she's just my, she's like the other half of me. Um, but anyways, she, she plans everything. Um, it was, we did drink tickets, but somehow it ended up being open bar. Um, and then we had a buffet of like pizza, pasta, salad, and wings. And what's really cool about the client appreciation party is it's not, no business, just come, you know, hang out, talk. But the cool thing about it is I had several people that'll come up to me and say, hey, my sister-in-law's thinking about selling. And instead of saying, oh, I'll wait for her to call, I will say, oh my God, that's great. Can I have her number? And as they're giving it to me, I'm texting her so that I have that connection right away rather than waiting for them to call you. Um, and that happened three times that night. So I have three clients just from hosting a client appreciation party. I spent a thousand dollars and I'll probably make 20,000 to 25,000 in commission. Um, and every year I talk at my company meeting and I say, you know, and I tell everybody what I'm doing. Last year, one person raised their hand for a client appreciation party. This year, two people raised their hand for a client appreciation party. I think you need to be doing a client appreciation party. Um, and then another thing that I do is anybody that had bought a house, I um, hand delivered um, ornaments to them, Christmas ornaments. I got them from personalizationmall.com. I spent $500 and they were um, personalized with their address. It was a little house. It had a key that hung below it. It just had their address on it and it said home sweet home. That went a long way. Everybody that got one, I shouldn't say everybody, but most of the people that got one were taking pictures of it, putting it on Instagram and Facebook and tagging me. Um, and I got a ton of likes and I got people reaching out to me. Um, and then one other thing, and then I'll stop talking, is I handwrite Christmas cards. We sent almost 500 handwritten Christmas cards this year. Um, I don't do the pre-printed ones. I handwrite them. It goes a really long way. So I encourage every agent to do something like that. And every year it's going to get higher and higher and higher and your hands are going to hurt. But start it now. Start writing them now um, and do a couple a week. So in December, you can mail them out. I mean, this year we'll probably sell seven or 800. Or we'll probably send out seven or 800, but we're starting to write them now. As we close, we write out a Christmas card. That is a great idea. And that's the thing. I think what holds a lot of people back is, is twofold. One, they think it's gonna cost a huge amount of money. And two, I think a lot of agents are afraid, but what if nobody shows up? Or what if only five people show up? Well, who cares? Yeah. Focus on those five people, have a good time, engage them and you'll you know it's going to go a long way so yeah, we, invite, we invited almost there was it was about 200 and we had six about 66 show up so it wasn't a huge turnout but it was decent great uh so let's talk about like your 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 team if you have one so who who here has an assistance who has you know, a team with buying agents. Let's learn about the structure of solo agent. Uh, and we'll go through the panel here. And then once we learn with everybody, how they're operating their business, we'll kind of ask a couple more questions on how they, you know, when they hired, do what the roles are and go go from there. So Jen, do you have anybody helping you out or on your team? So I'm a solo agent, but I do have a part-time, like um, we call her like a marketing person slash admin person. She basically handles um, ordering signs, running riders around, printing flyers, that kind of thing. Um, and then I have 
a transaction coordinator who helps me with point of sale paperwork through getting the review on Zillow. So that's my, that, those are my peeps. I mean, <laughs> they're very valuable. <laughs> Brian? Uh, I have one assistant who part-time does a little bit of everything for me from administration work, um, similar to what Jen said, running uh, those tedious errands uh, that take up some time and basically the things that I say are not money-making tasks for myself to be doing um, that I can um, pawn off. I'm pretty, I like to oversee my business. I'm a solo agent and it was hard for me to let go of some of those things. Uh, but doing so freed up so much time for me. Um, I'm starting to let her handle some social media graphics and different things um, and giving her, you know, the runs or posts on my behalf. So um, it is truly freeing up a lot of time for me and was the best decision I made to hire one. Um, my only regret was that I didn't do it sooner um, because I think it definitely has allowed me to take my business up a level. Awesome. Anthony? Yeah, I, uh, I'm also a solo agent. Um, however, I do have a marketing firm. Um, so she basically um, handles all my social media for me, uh, all marketing material on properties. Um, so that definitely helps a lot. And then I do have um, someone that handles like all of my paperwork as far as listing packets, buyer packets, that kind of stuff. But as far as like the actual relationship, listing appointments, um, showings, et cetera, that's all me. Um, similar to what Brian had mentioned, for me, the biggest thing um, is I have a tough time, um, a lot, like again, just to go back to what we touched on with the whole referral thing, um, if somebody's referring me because I, they, I did a good job and they were comfortable with me, I have a tough time then turning around and um, essentially pawning them off to maybe a buyer's agent. So for me, it's just like they're putting their trust in me. They heard good things about me. So, you know, I want to be the one to be able to, sh to, to showcase their skills and, um, you know, help them in the process. So having people behind the scenes is definitely crucial. Um, but as long as I can maintain, you know, getting these people in these homes and, and, and handling it solo, I, you know, I, can, I plan to continue to do that. Great. Jen? Yeah, I have a um, licensed assistant. Um, her name is Melissa. I hired her um, at the beginning of last year. Um, she pretty much does all of the behind the scenes stuff. So she checks all my paperwork for accuracy before she turns in all my files. She does all my marketing. She runs all my sign riders. She gets my files ready for um, closings. Um, she helps me with the client appreciation party, Christmas cards. I mean, she works 40 hours a week um she doesn't have a set schedule she basically does she works when she wants um which is cool because sometimes i need her on the weekends um she'll do open houses every once in a while if i have an overflow of buyers i'll give her some of the buyers to work with um but she she is licensed and i think that's key um for somebody trying to hire an assistant um if you're there's not much an unlicensed assistant can do um, and I did, I did a breakout about this, you know, about hiring an assistant. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them offline. Um, but I think that if you're going to get an assistant, make sure they're licensed, um, and your business will thank you. I went from 11 million to 19 million in one year just by, hi by hiring her. So I, I mean, I almost doubled my business. Wow. Okay, Steve, Steve is up next. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, so when I left my first company, that big box store, I needed to, uh, I, I, whenever I had double digit listings like that, 10, 11, 12, and I had three active buyers between that and the full time job, I was not doing as good of a job as I could for my clients. And I, that's the most important thing. The last thing you want to do is not do a good job. And with the opportunity I had to, to go to the next company, and it just so happened, they, the and, and that might be a good place for you to look because I, I heard somebody say get a license assistant. that's I couldn't agree more and the administrative assistant that was at my first company I was at um, she obviously had the background with the paperwork because that's the first and foremost the most difficult part to keep up with on this thing is a pain in the butt um, and uh, her knowledge of the paperwork was incredible and 
uh, then I really truly developed a partnership with her and we went to the next place together and that that helped me and I, I heard other panelists talk about it that took me from I did 4.75 million that year and then 7.75 the following year with her as, as a team and then we were able to get to 16 something million last year and and uh, she is incredible at getting all the paperwork and everything when I walk into a listing appointment, because that's really my job is to generate the business. Um, when it comes to getting the listing appointments, developing buyers, and some of that stuff, uh, she is she's on top of it with the paperwork and uh, making sure we're in everything we need to do. Because obviously, in our job, that's that's super important. And then also, a uh, buyer's agency running around and, and and doing all like the, the people to see houses. Um, and you know, we we work. We kind of have a system on too and how we show a house, like the different things, like that you should know before you even walk into the house, before you're going to show it to someone. Great. Yeah, I think you know the best advice I ever got when I was in full time production was from my coach, who said, you know, you're going to hit the ceiling, and you need to you need to learn how to replace yourself daily. From like Brian said, the the money making activities which you should be focusing on as an agent. You know, you guys. Uh, are are why the clients are reaching out to you. You are the ones that they're looking for the advice. You need to do what you do best, which is connect with them and guide it. But the paperwork, the sign writers, the things that are you know worth you know fifteen twenty dollars an hour, you're worth way more than that. And we have to you know leverage our time. Like Jen said, she went to almost twenty million just by hiring that assistant. So we don't we don't pay dividends by taking that leap uh, of faith to get a transaction coordinator and assistant. So uh, great advice all around, guys. Uh, and as you can see how it just really helped everybody, you know, achieve the level of production they're at and lets them still focus on the part of the businesses they want to focus on. So uh, let's dive into a couple of like, things now with, you know, the changing environment we're in and the change, you know, how we have to operate our business. Uh, you know, now is a great time to build new systems and routines that will outlast this quarantine. So. What new systems or new technologies have you guys embraced or what new systems and technologies are you looking into uh, currently uh, moving forward in your business, you know, since we have to operate different? Jen? Mike, I totally missed that whole thing. I couldn't hear anything for some reason. No. So the, the question is, you know, we're building new systems and routines now being, you know, on lockdown and operating our business differently. So what new systems or new technology have you looked into or implementing now because uh, we're, we're operating differently. Right, right. So um, not really new systems per se, although a lot of Zoom and a lot of this and a lot of FaceTime, uh, um, but not necessarily new systems, but utilizing what I already have. Um, so, you know, I have a YouTube channel. I do a lot of social media. I do a lot of video. Video has, like you said before, Mike, and yeah, uh, video is so important. Um, it, it's been a game changer for me. Um, and now it's like when people are calling me or inquiring about properties, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of people from out of town calling about properties over the last couple of weeks and I'm directing them to that, that content, right? Oh yeah. Check out the walkthrough in the house on my YouTube page, because I know once they get there, they're going to see all my other videos and probably start going through them depending on their level of boredom at that moment. But um, I feel like if I can get them to those videos or to my social media, to, to that content that I'm putting out, I'll get them to like me before we have a chance to meet. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about, right? That's the first impression. So I think it's really just, if you have that content already developed and ready, use it. Um, hit your database with it, you know make sure you're posting it on social media and direct new clients and new leads to those places so they can find it easily. Um, I was actually surprising myself. I know, I mean, it sounds so like, yeah, no kidding, Jen, but like I was surprising myself how the reaction has been over the last few weeks, giving that kind of human touch because I think we're all sort of isolated right now. So a happy smiling face um, goes a really long way right now. And I think that's really important for you guys to take advantage of. Um, and the other thing is, don't be afraid to be yourself if you do dive into the videos. Um, I am very, very authentically myself, good or bad. <laughs> um, but I think people really appreciate that. And you don't need to have canned responses. You don't need to be sitting like a statue. Be yourself. Try to be natural. I know it's a little unnatural at first, but I'm telling you that goes a really long way. 
great, great advice. Yep. Brian, you you using anything new, new technology, new systems, implementing new things in your business? Yeah, so I've used this time to try to get on top of things that I've kind of let slack. Um, I essentially, similar to what Jen said, had a ton of systems already in place. I just wasn't implementing them the way I should. Um, so shout out to the Wilhelm and McCune team uh, with Cowden Creek. They taught me about an app called Airtable a little while ago. Um, you can upload scripts into it and I had it and I had uploaded a few, but um, during this time I really tackled basically every step of the process on the buy side or the sell side, uploading a script onto this app so that way when you know we are busy with our businesses again, um, you can simply send emails and texts just copy and pasting um, these scripts, which I think is gonna free up a ton of my time rather than having you know to type out lengthy emails or have these long conversations over the phone. Um, so on that note, I've been utilizing video a lot and I'm filming videos for each step of the way as well. So that way I can keep my buyers and my sellers in the loop throughout the process and say, oh, we're about to write an agreement. Let's walk through the agreement together. And I have a video of me going over uh, every step of the 14 page sales contract with them. So that way, again, you know, in the future, I don't have to sit there on the phone or with them for 45 minutes going through the same thing. I can send them the video, have them go through it, and then get back to me with any questions. Um, and I have a CRM that I really wasn't taking advantage of, so I've used this time to really clean it up and start to utilize all the different tools that it can do. Um, a lot of our brokerages offer a ton of free services, and it's up to us if we want to implement them in our business or not. So I've definitely taken advantage of the extra time to learn them and uh, start using them. Awesome. Yeah, yeah um, combination of both. Um, so taking taking some time to um, kind of get caught up on things that I have put on the back burner for the last few years um, that I always say I'm going to get around to do, and, and, and I don't do them. So that's been great and just kind of enjoying a little bit of a breather, um, utilizing a ton of the virtual links and a ton of video. Um, I do work with a lot of investors that probably makes up 25% of my business annually. Um, so a lot of those um, guys and gals are fine to purchase um, based on photos. And if the price is right, um, they'll, they'll snag it. Um, I myself, I invest in flip as well. Um, and I was pretty fortunate recently. I just got um, a new flip under contract. What I did was uh, about two weeks ago, I just started throwing out some crazy lowball numbers at listings across the board and uh, had an agent reach out on Monday and said, hey, um, would, you, would you consider X amount? And I said, how about this amount? And long story short, we came together and uh, we're going to close it in 30 days cash and base it off the photos. I walked the property from the exterior. And um, so one thing I can say to to, to fellow agents is really encourage um, your investors or buyers, you know, right now, don't be afraid to throw those, those numbers out there because people will bite. Um, so I, I think that's something if you could put a little bit of time aside and, and, and just hone in on certain areas that you know your investors like and, and get them on board maybe with some numbers and, and, and just start throwing out those agreements. And even if it's as simple as an email that you can kind of copy and paste and say, Hey, look, uh, my investor is willing to offer X amount and just copy and paste that all the way through. And if it gets further past step one, then throw it together on the agreement or whatever, right? So you're not writing up 100 agreements, but um, take advantage uh, of the opportunity right now because uh, I think it's there. That's great. That's great advice. Really great advice. Yep. Jen? Yeah. Sorry about that uh, kick thing that just happened there. <laughs> Um, okay, so I mean, for me, I, I mean, the system that I'm putting into place right now, one, I'm just trying to get caught up and organized from um, the last couple months, but I, I'm not doing much work. I'm, I'm just kind of staying put and I am a teacher to three kids right now. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on, unfortunately. Um, the business will pick back up when we're allowed to work. Um, I'm probably in the minority here and just saying I'm enjoying not working for a few weeks just because I never have not worked. I've had a job since I was 12 years old. Um, so I'm kind of enjoying this time a little bit, probably more than I should. 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all we're doing right now is just kind of getting organized and just trying to figure out, you know, kind of what we're do when we're allowed to work again. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, yeah, we're good. Okay, so the, the things that uh, Melanie and I have been doing a week, uh, and I think that this is something we should all kind of get prepared for. Uh, we have like 14 houses that we're going to be listing as of right now. Everybody has their paperwork. Everybody has all the information, and, and I've gone over what their house needs to like, what the different things that we all know, like guidelines, the, the typical guide that fall into the, the government loans to get all of those fixes ready. And I've had to take pictures of different things in their house and send them to me so I could I could try and try and walk them through some of the things I think that need to be fixed to get a house ready. So, so that we've been doing that uh, virtually, um, and we've also been trying to assess our own business because I feel like when this when this all kind of flips around, I, I mean, I'm sure everybody that's on these calls and that's listening, we probably have just in our, our little room here, hundreds of things going to have to pop on, if not a thousand. So I feel like it's really going to flip to a buyer's. So if you have buyers you can create a business to get buyers, I feel like that's almost going to be more important than they, they always teach people to get listings, get listings. Uh, you know, if you can get a buyer with that, that could fall in the guidelines, Changed. You know, FHA used to be 580 to get up to get a loan. Now it's 640. If you have reserves, it's 660. If you don't have reserves, you know, the rates have been a little bit volatile. So that uh, people using their credit cards, uh, maybe losing their jobs, that gap in, in having a job, you know, how is it going to affect some of these potential buyers? You know, some of the buyers that I have, I've been talking to them about. Uh, we have about five or six people that are going to be actively looking at houses. So kind of pre preparing them and making sure that they're ready when this kind of frees up that, you know, will they be able to still purchase on? Uh, and, and so I've been trying to, you know, reach out to them, contact with them and, you know, kind of get our, our paperwork and, and our base ready. And actually talking about maybe, maybe five days, at least for the first month or two, when this kind of let, let's lose to try and satisfy the buyers, the buyers that we might pick up um, when, when this kind of, when this subsides. Okay. Okay, I think, I think, you know, Brian made a great point is, you know, we have, we have a lot of time on our hands now and most of, and all of our offices offer great tools, great technology that we underutilize, don't utilize at all. So it's not that we have to look into new systems. So I think it's a great time to learn the systems we currently have, maximize their potential uh, and, and utilize them to their fullest the capabilities is, is, is more than enough for, for most of us out there. So great time to dive into your systems, your, your, what your office offers you and, and learn it uh, and be, you know, a master at your CRM. Uh, without a CRM, you know, you're not going to be able to touch your, your your sphere of influence to get those referrals. But it all ties together. Uh, so what I know a lot of people are anxious to hear about out there because, you know, we're hearing so much mis, uh, so much information being shared. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys on what are you telling your sellers? You know, what are you telling your buyers? Are you holding on to listings? Do you think we should be listing houses now? Just kind of what is your advice you've been given to your to your buyers and sellers out there? What do you feel is 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 the best approach? Again, there's no right or wrong answer. Everybody conducts their business differently and everybody is, you know, uh, has their own opinion. But to just, I know a lot of people ask that all the time. I've seen it over and over again is, what are you telling your sellers? You know, what are you telling your buyers? So if anybody be willing to share that, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, I mean, I can give a, a little bit of information. So, um... So for the most part, you know, for my buyers, you know, I'm making sure, especially if they're new buyers, um, making sure we have accurate searches set up, um, having Zoom calls with them to either introduce myself if they're like the out-of-town folks that I've been getting, or Zoom calls, again, just for that face-to-face -face contact for buyers that are still looking and haven't found anything yet. Um, kind of reassuring them that things are going to be okay, um, telling them what I've heard, what podcasts I've listen to kind of what I've been gleaning from other, you know, industry professionals and um, sort of telling them too, you know, how to prepare for when things open up again, um, kind of to piggyback off of what Anthony was saying, you know, if you have a buyer who's willing to do, um, you know, pictures and look off of pictures and virtual tours and what have you and make an offer, it's a heck of a lot less competition right now. So if they've been getting beat up on multiple offer situations and whatnot, 
depending on how seasoned and comfortable they are and how comfortable you are, of course, like orchestrating that, um, it's not a bad time to go for it, you know? Um, and again, not everyone's going to be cool with that and that's okay, but be confident in giving them that option, you know, offer it. Um, and I've been telling new buyers, you know, if you, if you want me to connect with the listing agent, see if we can do a four way zoom call with the seller at the house, the seller's agent at her house, me at mine, you know, we can do that. Um, and actually, you know, we have a couple of sales, you know, that I've done that way over the last couple of weeks, um, which is, which is great. Um, and then from a seller perspective, that's a little bit trickier, I think. Um, I'm definitely a, uh, more of a listing agent than I am a buyer's agent. That's just kind of how my business has transpired. Um, I'm sort of of the mindset right now. I don't necessarily want my listing sitting in the MLS right now, just sitting no. there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so unless I have a seller that has to, has to sell right now, doesn't care, wants it in the MLS, I'm probably not putting it in the MLS right now. I'll get paperwork done. I'll get kind of all my ducks in a row, um, but I'm probably not going to the MLS. I mean, most relocation companies aren't allowing things to be listed now. Um, you know, everything's kind of sort of so tight that I'm sort of encouraging people to um, to at least wait until the end of this month to see what's going on and then proceed from there. And I may change my tune come May 1st if we're still locked down. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of learning as I go here, yeah. as I think a lot of us are. I'm gonna talk to him. What, what's that, Dion? Yeah, go ahead. See, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh my God, so, uh, thanks, I, can you see me? We no? can see it, yeah. We see it. So some of the things that, that we've talked about, I mean, obviously it's gonna be difficult for a couple of things. One, are you gonna want people walking in somebody's house? Mm -hmm. you know, like the answer to that question probably is is no, you shouldn't be going to people's houses, especially if you're living there. And we're not allowed to. So so like let's talk about that part. You're, you're technically not allowed to. And I don't think it's a good idea for people to be walking in people's houses. So I've been telling people and, and kinda of along the same lines that you know this probably isn't the best time. I don't think it's good to, to even try to list your house. Uh because then we're, we're we're talking about you taking pictures most likely of your own house. And you know, how good are they going to be? Well, how professional are they going to be? And then you're going to send them to me. And then we're going to write up a, a, a synopsis of your house, basically the FaceTime video. None, none of those things. I, I don't like any of those options. And I think that, you know, unless somebody was desperate and they had to sell their house and we're just going to try and put it out there. I don't see, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan and I don't think that we personally, I don't think we should be doing it. But um, I, obviously I, I also might change my tune after this, this May 1st. And I, and I feel like, to be honest, like with the little bit that I hear from behind the scenes at, at my other job, I think that we're going to be one of the first people to get rolled out here, and, and, and it it probably will be within a couple weeks. Um, I, you know, I I don't know. I think everyone saw the home inspectors. So if you had a house that got kind of bound up because of home inspectors, mm -hmm. come back to uh, March 18th. If you had the deal March 18th or earlier, you can actually get a home inspection done on your house. Um, one of the deals I did, uh, we negotiated the price down on the house. And we for, we forego the home inspection. We actually just um, that's one of the things we did to, to close on one of our houses. It's actually going to close up next Friday. But uh, most of the things that we've talked about, I don't think it's a really good idea personally to to, to list a house. Though. Anybody listing, putting their more houses on the market? Every listing they get right now is anybody taking the opposite approach and having success with it out there? I so. Uh, I put one on the market um, because they insisted, um, and we've had zero calls. Um, and it's a house that should that should sell, which I'm pr I'm proud of us for not. I'm proud that I haven't had any um, showing requests because we should not be showing houses. Um, we need to be listening to the governor's orders. I mean, I don't agree with it. Obviously, I want to be selling houses, but you know, and I also have these. Um, buyers who are saying, well, my friend's friend is an agent and she said she'll take me to see the house. And that's frustrating um, because you're breaking role, you're breaking laws, not just roles. Um, and, you know, the other issue with listing houses now, you can get an offer sight unseen, but you're pulling that house off the market for how many days while you're waiting for them to be able to get a home inspection. That's not, I mean, why? Um, just wait 
And then you have the opportunity to potentially get multiple offers once things, once things open up, because I do think the housing market is going to be booming when this is over. I don't think we're going to see any, I don't think we're going to see any drastic um, changes um, negatively. Uh, but I am encouraging all my sellers to wait. Um, some of them are anxious, um, but that's kind of how I explain it to them is you're going to take your house off the market for one person for no reason for 30 days, possibly while they can't get a home inspection. So just wait 30 days or whatever now. Um, and we can potentially have multiple offers for you. You can get more, you know, more for your house. So, so um, for me, it's been more of a more, uh, more of case by case basis. Um, so, and again, it's just because I try to categorize, you know, you got your regular single family properties, you have your investment pieces. And then, you know, for me, if you're in a cookie cutter area where they, where, where the condos or townhomes might, um, turn over quickly, um, I've taken a little bit of an opposite approach. Um, there are those communities out there where we know that, uh, if the minute you put that condo or townhome up, it's snatched up and gone. Um, I like to look at things glass half full here we are mid april okay let's hope that they open up the floodgates beginning of may um so if we are writing up a contract now okay we'll put the contingency 21 days out or 20 days out hope for the best and if we're permitted to do things come the first week of may let's go ahead and get that inspection at that point do that first initial walkthrough etc so i have just i agree for the most part the large majority of homes i would not put up right now but if I think it's in a super hot market and a good price point where there could be cash involved, purchased directly off of the video footage, because look, if I took a buyer through Adams Ridge in Sevenfield and they missed out on multiple offers on three different townhomes, chances are that townhome that now popped up this morning, it's going to be the same layout, same room dimensions, same HOA, et cetera. I'm going for it. Um, and it's less competition. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to get a little bit more creative right now. Um, and, you know, I just think, again, it's case by case basis, but I do think there's a little bit of a window of opportunity right now. Great. Brian, do you have anything to share? Um, I think pretty much everybody uh, said the same things I was thinking. Um, I agree with Anthony. I think it is a time that buyers could kind of make out on some things. Um, I just am putting a deal together that's came together a little bit um earlier today uh where the buyer's getting a pretty good deal on something we saw as soon as it hit the market and things got shut down and it sat there and uh, my buyer decided let's just go for it even though you know we're going to kind of be on hold um until we can proceed with the inspection uh but she's going to get herself a pretty good deal and a neighborhood where we're selling multiple offers um i'm glass half full as well i'm really hopeful that as soon as things open back up that our market's um, pittsburgh strong and i think we're going to stay that way um, i'm a little fearful that it might sway more towards a buyer's market than what uh, we've been used to with the seller's market um, just with um, things changing and um, different lending regulations maybe being adjusted that um, might not put as many buyers out there as there once were for uh, certain properties. So um, I'm also holding on to listings. I have 12 listings that we're just waiting for um, things to open up. Um, I won't list something without professional photography. So I don't even want to bother with a seller trying to take their own photos or something. Cause like Jen said, most of the listings, um, unless it's in a hot area where, you know, there's a lot to compare it to, um, they're just going to be sitting cause I've been pretty pleased that most agents are following uh, orders and not still showing. So, you know, why bring down your day on market, um, your average for yourself, uh, as well as, you know, your seller, um, if it's just going to sit there. So, Great. So, you know, Jen thinks the market's going to pick right back up. So what, what are your others, what are your guys' opinions on, you know, once we get the green light, what do you foresee? Uh, you know, do you think it's going to be more of a buyer's market? Do you think it's going to be, you know, similar to what it was before the shutdown? What are your, we know none of us have a crystal ball. So just kind of what are, what are your thoughts on what we'll, we'll see when we get the green light, hopefully, you know, beginning of May here. I think initially it'll stay pretty similar to how it was. I think it's going to transition into more of a buyer's market, but I'm not sure that's going to happen right away. Um, and I do think we're going to have to um, prepare ourselves for some of our sellers and buyers and other folks, seller and buyers, that are still going to be hesitant to let us show, let us come, let us do our job, you know. 
even with social distancing in place or whatever other mandates may be put on us, which I think we're all willing to follow, um, there are still gonna be some folks that are hesitant. So we just have to be um, sensitive to that. And remember, this is bigger than all of us. Um, but I do think it's gonna be busy. And from what I've heard, everybody's projecting summer 2020 to be the spring, right? So that's what I'm, that's what I'm gearing up for. Great. Uh <clears throat> One more question, guys, on my end, and let's, let's see what kind of questions are coming through. Uh, people are, you know, typing in. I know there's it's blinking. I haven't looked at any of them yet, but just uh, off of real estate, you know, just share advice with, you know, I know some of us are, you know, homeschooling now. I have three kids and I'm trying to homeschool plus a two-year-old running around interrupting everything. So it's a challenge. It's a daily. We're adjusting. So what what are you guys doing to get through your day-to-day, -day, you know, to keep normalcy, to keep your sanity, to kind of just get through? I know... Jen and Brian, we've gone some Peloton rides together, you know, trying to stay exercised and, you know, just, uh, you know, blow off some steam that way, uh, which has been great. So what have you guys been doing in your life to just try to, you know, make the best of it? I think for me, it's about, we're not essential right now, right, as far as the governor is concerned in our state, but it's like, how can we be essential though? You know what I mean? Like beyond just real estate, beyond just our job. So whether it's raising money for, um, a local organization, helping there for your parents in any way you can. Um, how can you be essential in other people's lives right now? That has really helped me stay like positive and just re remember that it's bigger than just me, right? Uh, beyond that, with homeschooling two kids and an infant at home, um, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what have you been doing to keep uh, That's it. Well, I try to I try to emphasize a little bit. I, I noticed the uh, the amount of alcohol in my house no, is up and down a little more than than it has been over the, the past. Um, and I, I think the charity thing is great. I'm actually going to have a virtual gun bash on us this this Sunday. So uh, I'm looking cool. forward to how that goes. Hopefully, I'm able to use my technological skills a little better than I was today. Yeah, uh, yeah. I actually have that. Some, one of the things I wanted to go back to real quick, you know, I, I, I talk to my lender a lot about different things that are going on, and I think that you, you probably, if you're not you don't want to try and talk to them about revisiting that because the FHA loan, they don't are but you actually get that loan. Um, talk about the jumbo loan is basically non-existent right now so if you have a person finding a jumbo loan which is um five ten four hundred one dollars that loan is almost not existent more fargo to be carrying that loan um so and that's one of that that's not who i normally use but that's one of the largest lenders out there so like well, I can try to, you know, they even had that product available um and then with people using their credit cards right now that don't have and then the people that maybe lost their job or had a break in employment a lot of times that goes through underwriting and that doesn't, that affects them adversely when it comes to trying to buy a house. So between that and the fact that we're, we all have dozens of houses to list, I feel like there's going to be a large, a large inventory, which our buyers haven't seen for a, a, quite a while. And there's going to be a, maybe a smaller pool of buyers just because of the lending guidelines, not necessarily people that don't want to buy a house, but, but they can't buy a house because of their credit score jumping from, you know, in the low sixes. And now that's not something that they qualify for. So uh, I, I think we need to sort of, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be like the boogeyman when it comes to like the market taking a dip, but there's a lot of signs that point towards uh, like strong signs where it's going to be specifically a buyer's market here uh, in, in the near future. Um, yeah, oh, that's it. And I try and enjoy myself. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I like you know, going out and exercising. Uh, the virtual gun bash, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out. Uh, I pray it doesn't come out like this one just came out with me, or with me my uh, social <laughs> skills. <laughs> Great. My, my hands are falling off. I can, they're not. Well, I can barely feel them. Exercise. My yeah, lord. I'm providing you exercise. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this for you on Sunday then. Sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Brian, what, what are you doing, Brian, to stay normal and, and keep up, you know, sane? Um, lots of wine and white claws for sure. Um, but <laughs> I'll say the first couple weeks of this are a little tough for me. Um, 
first of all, as realtors, we pretty much work all the time. So I was sort of enjoying the time off, um, doing all those things that we shouldn't be doing, binging on Netflix and whatnot. But um, like Steve said, exercising, getting outside when I can for a run or bike ride, um, virtual bike rides have been great. Um, but I think the thing that's really helped me these last couple of weeks, um, I've started putting myself back on a normal schedule, trying to wake up at the same time every day, getting um, ready in the mornings just as I would if I were going out to appointments, um, and then sitting down on my computer, running through, um, you know, whatever tasks I jot down um, at the beginning of the day that I want to get through, uh, who, who I want to call, uh, what things I want to do in my systems and whatnot, um, and really trying to tackle those things. Um, my company has done a lot of virtual trainings that have been super informative and helpful. So um, I've been attending those or other webinars. Um, one thing I think that is somewhat awesome is I've connected with a lot of other agents within our industry and together, you know, we're masterminding or sharing ideas similar to what we're doing right now. And um, I think it's building those relationships and connections are going to help us when we're the gates do open and we're able to go back to work. Um, so trying to stay as normal as possible when they set on um, a schedule and still uh, staying connected with people. Um, I'm an extrovert, so this has been extremely hard for me, but virtual happy hours, um, virtual meetings like this um, are really helping me to stay connected with people. Awesome. Ken? Ken? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so for me, I have been working out every, I've been working out every single day. Um, and then we got this little guy on this loop. So she's kind of keeping us sane. Oh, <laughs> she has to win the show with the dog. Uh, so she's been entertaining us. Um, but I'm just kind of staying busy with the kids. Um, like I said, I didn't get, I haven't been able to spend a lot of time with them um, for the past few years so it's kind of nice to just be hanging out with them and then I'm organizing my house I'm cleaning out cupboards that I didn't even know I had I'm finding stuff that I didn't even know I bought so just kind of getting organized in our house as well so awesome Anthony yeah I have a two and a four year old so you know they keep me going scavenger hunts Legos coloring um, watching a lot of Peppa Pig um, but uh, trying to do a lot of routine, you know, trying to keep a routine too, though, you know, I think it's important to have a really good balance for all of us right now, you know, have the exercise, you know, as part of our daily routine or at least, you know, multiple days a week, um, you know, emails, following up with clients. One thing I really have um, made a point is, is every day picking a couple of clients and just staying in front of them, checking in with them um, and, you know, just trying to prepare and be one step ahead when the floodgates do open. Um, and uh, pretty much uh, pen up in this place. We're building a new home right now. And I think I've packed every item I could possibly pack to move it in that place whenever it's done. So uh, we're living out of boxes right now. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, I, I think, you know, the, the main thing is it's okay to have a bad day. There was a day last week I was just so damn angry and mad that I was, I was horrible to be around. And it's okay. I mean, because this is tough for all of us. It's it's this isn't normal. It, there's you know it's it's there's not all going to be you know a routine well, turn my in volume. place. So it's okay to have a bad day. And what I've realized is you know I have four kids no, right and death, but I have so much yeah. more appreciation no, for my wife when she goes through a daily basis being a stay-at-home mom. Here. This is my God, awesome. Uh, I mean, I, you know, Where's I come out of the clock and you bed like nine. No, this. I'm trying to turn but this up. But they are awesome, you know, and, and God bless her for for staying home with them and, and, and just being an amazing mother. Right uh, there. Hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's oh, better. Oh, is there something yeah. on top there? No. No, I've got a couple no. questions we'll get to here, but... Uh, like Anthony said, right now is the most opportune time out there, guys. Yeah. To just touch base with everybody you know. Just ask them how they're doing. You know, if there's anything you could do for them. Jen, you know, like she said, is, is do stuff for the community, organize things. You know, now is the most opportune time to to assist your neighbor, to get to know your neighbor. Uh, you know, there's so much opportunity out there to do good. And, and turning on now. And just letting agents and your fellow, you know 
neighbors know that you're there for them, that you are approachable, that you are willing to help is just goes a long way. Uh, one of the questions we had was, for those who have assistance, how, how do you pay your assistant? Is it hourly? Are they on salary? Uh, and if they're, you know, what, 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 what are you paying them? This way? Yeah, I'm turn real please. Nope, nope. Um, oh, I, I'll go first. Yep. Um, I have her keep track of how many hours she puts in, and I sort of also kind of pay by task. Um, and then at the end of the month, I just shoot her a Venmo, um, which isn't probably the best way, but um, I'm relatively new with hiring an assistant, so um, that's just sort of how I do it for both of us. <laughs> Um, um, for me, I pay my assistant, I pay her hourly, but I still, I pay her, um, for 40 hours a week, no matter what. Um, I don't know if she goes over the 40 hours, but then there's some weeks that she, um, probably doesn't do 40 hours. And right now she's not working at all, but I'm still paying her just because I love her to death and I don't want her to leave me ever. Um, but it's, I have, I'm, have her set up through, um, a payroll company, so I pay her through paychecks. Um, and I have myself set up as um, a sole proprietor, so um, I do have to pay into unemployment and I do have to pay into um, disability for her as well. So it's not cheap hiring an assistant, but you, you'll make a lot more money if you have one. And what, Jan, what do you pay her per hour, if you mind us asking? Um, I, I pay her $20 an hour and then I bonus her um, based on um, us meeting certain goals. Great. Jen, Anthony, do you guys want to share with you how you handle your assistance? Um, I would love to pay my transaction coordinator per file, but I don't, but I would love to. I think there, I think there's something to be said for that. It uh, helps keep them kind of motivated too to get to closing, right? Um, I haven't been able to transition to that, although I did hire my transaction co coordinator under the premise that that's what we we're going to do. Um, I just haven't transitioned to it yet because from a, I have a payroll company as well. I'm an LLC. Um, it's kind of hard to work through the payroll company for that kind of payment, but I do think if you're able to do per file and just come right off when you get paid yourself. I think that's sweet, especially if you're like a newer agent and maybe don't have um, as much volume right now. Um, that would be less pain on the purse strings, I think. Um, it just doesn't, right now, it's just not working really that well for me with uh, the amount of transactions I do. But I think if you're newer, I think that could be a great way to handle it. Jen, what would you pay per transaction? So a number of people that I've talked to in other markets, sorority sisters, friends, what have you, pay between $300 and $400 per transaction. We have a lot of agents in our office who use a transaction coordinator on per deal basis and pay a closing, and it's anywhere between two and $300 from contract to close. So about, about $250 is average that I'm seeing. Uh, Anthony, how, how do you handle uh, pay your assistant? You say you have a marketing company. Uh, do you pay them yeah. per per deal or are they on a, like a salary based or how they work so she owns so yeah i have a marketing firm that handles all my social media all all the marketing in general for all of my listings um so she charges me per listing and then a flat fee for services she's fantastic she actually um works with a lot of other agents here in the pittsburgh market um but i, I love her she'll do other random tasks i can you know reach out to her and say hey maybe you know uh, help with this magazine ad or billboard or whatever it may be that I'm working on and, and she'll she'll work at A to Z for me. Um, so that's a huge, huge, um, you know, uh, that's a huge responsibility off of my plate. Um, and then I do have someone help me with some of the paperwork as well. Same thing. I pay, um, you know, per deal, per transaction, and then I always bonus out. Um, so if there's like a hot new listing that I put up and it was really just kind of moving some paper and some photos, um, you know, I always take care of them there too. Um, but, you know, I know it, it, it is tricky because, um, you know, we are so exposed as agents to everybody is what we're making on every transaction and just in general. And uh, one of the things I, I found to be true is um, people are super excited when you first get them to help and you get them on board to do some things when they're making that quick, easy cash. Um, but I think as they get more and more familiar with what you're making and how much you make, um, it's tricky because uh, they lose that excitement a little bit. 
So finding good people and taking care of them is really important. Mm -hmm. 100%. Dave, how do you, how do you, how do you and Melanie work? Oh, well, Melanie and I, when I, when we left, when I left my, uh, the first company I was at, went to the second company, I, I really needed help. I, the business was growing and I was going to be unable to do a good job. So, and, and I actually read a book about, you know, how to try and uh, work into a, like some type of partnership or, or to hire someone. And I would suggest that if, that if it was a person that wrote a question, correct? Is that what this is? Mm -hmm. a question that came? Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that if you can evaluate, and I think we should always be doing this, evaluate yourself and find out what you're best at and the thing that you like doing the best. And then I think you just heard a bunch of different people give great ideas. If, you know, maybe if you're, you know, really don't want to do, be involved with social media as much, hire somebody that's a professional. Uh, if you need somebody to do admin and that's the part that you're weakest at, hire somebody to do admin and then uh, try and find out what the the costs are. The, the one thing about this business is, and I think everyone that's here understands that you got to spend money to make money. You know, if you think you're going to take that large piece of the pie every time and not divvy it up to grow yourself, you're, you're, you're kidding yourself. So I would suggest you find the avenue that you are the weakest at and maybe team up with another agent. Maybe it's you and another agent that hire an admin person. Maybe it's, it, it's, a, it's a two or three of you that hire somebody in your office to handle the transactions. And I think that's probably a good way to start for someone else. Imagine you start to do like three, four, five, six, seven, eight million dollars, and you're you're finding that you you don't have enough time to, to service people properly. Great. Guys, if this closed out with just any words of advice that we didn't cover or anything you want to share uh, to agents out there that are that are listening. And uh, like I said, we're going to record this so we can share it to, to more agents. Uh, I thought there was a lot of great information here today. Uh, so let's just, uh, we'll go around and just you know, close with whatever you else you want to share with. Jen? So I would say if there's any takeaways, at least from me, um, from this, it would be be authentic, be kind. Because even if you're in a transaction with a complicated realtor on the other side, you're going to see them again. So try to take your yourself out of it, right? Be kind. It's so important. It goes such a long way. Um, I pride myself in people not having a lot of negative stuff to say about me in business. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. Believe me, I'm not. But I do my best to do what's right and be kind. Um, I would say get a CRM and it's your baby, it's your business, it's the lifeblood of what you do. So if your brokerage offers it, if you have to pay one, pay for one separately, get it, use it, learn how to use it. It is so important. It's all we have as agents uh, that has value, you know what I mean? That's more tangible. Um, and lastly, um, especially for you new guys out there, like learn every day, you're gonna make mistakes. I mean, I make mistakes all the time, um, but it's a matter of what you do from that um, and how you learn and how you come back from those mistakes. Um, and a quote I love, and I just shared it on my, my personal IG story, is success is a collection of well-curated failures. And I think that is just spot on. So I hope everybody stays healthy and safe. And if anyone ever needs anything, uh, hit me up. Awesome, Jim. Brian? Uh, well, ditto to that. <laughs> Um, that's a hard one to follow up with, so thanks, Jen, for that. But uh, I'd say one of the questions you had on the agenda was, what's your biggest mistake? So I sort of thinking back, you know, where do I go wrong in my business? And I think for me, a lot of the times it's follow up, especially early on in my business. I'd be too scared to bother someone or something. You know, they'd reach out prematurely and I wouldn't stay on them for a while. And then I'd see a Facebook friend or someone post that they bought a house with another agent and think like, why didn't I, you know, spend more time reaching out to them or whatnot. So I always too say that I'm gonna do things when I have more time. Um, I finally have that time now. So I'm following up with people constantly uh, during this time. And this is sort of a piggyback off of what Jen was saying about being your authentic self. Um, I found that my business really started to take off um, through social media once I started putting more of myself out there and being you know, my true self. Um, rather than just uh, obviously I keep it professional to a point but um, I'm very personable as well and I mix the two and found that 
the more I show of my authentic self, uh, the better people react to it and the more that, you know, they want to be around that um, and send their friends and family to that. Awesome. Jen? Um, so a couple things for me. I mean, the first thing, um, I do know there's some seasoned agents and some new agents on this call, and I can appreciate that. For the newer agents, I just I would say don't give up. Um, this is a this is a business where it's really, really easy to give up because it's hard to get started and there's a lot of agents out there. Um, but just stay diligent and you know, stay stay positive. Um, and keep working, keep doing with open houses, keep doing floor times, you will be successful um, if you stick with it. Um, my other um, bit of advice is set goals for yourself. Um, goals are dreams with deadlines. I am very big with goal setting. Um, I set goals for myself, I set them for my assistant, I set them for us um, you know, together. And I also set them um, for my personal life, um, my financial life, um, even my fitness life. Um, I'm trying to set it for not drinking so much wine anymore because we've been drinking a lot of wine. Um, but anyways, and, you know, revisit those, those goals. Um, not just, you know, once or twice a year, do it weekly and just kind of make sure you're still on track. Um, and set them, and you know, your goals don't have to be huge. It could be something small. Um, I come from a very poor family. Um, my parents had multiple bankruptcies. We moved from house to house. Um, they owned several failing businesses. I was never in, you know, the same school in, in one school. It, I mean, probably eight different schools I went to. Um, and my, the biggest thing that I remember from my childhood is the one vacation we went on. We went on one vacation and it was to Ohio. And that's not really a vacation, um, but it's something that I remember. And my first year in real estate, I set a goal of um, taking my kids on a Disney cruise. I mean, I didn't get to do it until my third year in business, but little, little things like that. Not that that's little, trust me, it was not, <laughs> not a cheap trip, but it was something that I desperately, desperately wanted to do. And that was, you know, that was a goal I set for myself was to take them on a Disney cruise. So um, I'm really big with setting goals. Um, and I just wanted to say one last thing, and then I have to jump off of here. This is really awesome. I love that we have five agents from five different companies, and we can come together as one, and we can all be cordial and civil and I just I love it um, and I I just wanted to say that so thank you Dion and Mike for putting this together I think it's really really awesome that we can do this and I hope that if we helped at least one person that we did our jobs today so everybody take care take, you stay healthy and wash your hands <laughs> thank you Jen we'll see you later I gotta jump off Anthony yeah I second that thank you for putting this together both of you really appreciate it um, I think this is a really good time for all of us to come out a little bit better than we were before. Um, so whether it's brushing up on certain materials or things that we just maybe lacked or certain areas that we lacked in, um, get better, um, work on those things and, and, and just hit the ground running. Um, I also think it's a really good time to just enjoy a breather. We all know before, you know, we're all going to blink and we're going to be pulling in at eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, missing breakfast, lunch, and dinner and going, and, you know, um, eating a bowl of cereal at 11 o'clock and counting that as three meals. So, you know, money will always be there. Work will always be there. We're all going to get through this. Um, you can't buy back time. So, you know, I really have just loved being with my kids and just love, you know, FaceTime and family and friends and, and, and really just enjoying the breather because, um, you know, once this starts up, uh, we all know what it's like and we know what the grind is like. Um, and for me, honestly, too, uh, I think we are we are truly blessed to be in this industry. And I think we're compensated really well for what we do. And we should be because we work hard. But um, this is a good opportunity to give back if you have the opportunity, um, whether it's volunteering, donating. There's a lot of people out there right now that are hurting. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm a huge believer in, in giving back and, 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 you know, helping others out. And this is a really good time to dive into that. And um, Lastly, just stay positive and, you know, again, uh, enjoy the time, enjoy the breather. The weather is turning. So, um, you know, things are looking on the up and up. Yeah. Steve? Uh, I, 
loved hearing a lot of the comments that, that uh, some of these agents just shared. I, I think that setting goals is, is incredible. I think that's something very important uh, for newer agents. I, I didn't sell a house. It took me six months to sell my first house. And by the time they took all my fees and all this stuff out there, I got a couple hundred dollars and then I had to pay taxes on that. So completely understand it's a grind. You know, this is definitely a marathon, not a script. And I would implore you to slip real estate into every one of your conversations when you first started off with all your, your network and your people. Uh, they love People love talking about real estate. They really do. I mean, you'll have so many people that come up to you and talk to you and say, I thought about getting my license or I thought about this. Trust me, people absolutely love, love talking about real estate. Um, and I would suggest you flip that in there. We're all going to make mistakes. Uh, we definitely, it's a grind. It's how we handle our mistakes when we make them. Um, and, and lastly, I would say always try and learn. And I don't care what the job is it, it, in, in, your, in every aspect of your life. And the day that you think that you, you aren't learning or that you think you know it all is the day you should quit because we are learning. I, I've literally been taking notes the entire time I've been sitting here um, from all the different people that I've, I've got a chance to, to be a part of on this panel. So I appreciate you giving me a chance to sit here and take notes and to learn um, from the awesome people that I got to, to be in sort of in a group with uh, through Dion holding and helping Dion with her forearm exercise. <laughs> so I appreciate everything. Thank you for doing this and thank you for being a part of it. And I just want to close with thanking everybody again. Like I said, guys, you without hesitation said yes to, to share and be real with us. And I, I know we helped a lot of the agents out there uh, with the great advice. And it's just truly, uh, you know, an honor and privilege to be here, like I said, with you guys. So I just want to close with, like Jen said and Anthony, you know, if you can give back. Uh, on Saturday, I don't know if you've, a lot of you haven't seen it, but Scott Blasey of the Clarks is going live from his basement every Saturday. And we've been broadcasting his live performances on our Oneberg page. And this week we're raising money for the Washington City Mission. So the Washington City Mission does amazing things in Washington County for veterans and, and, and women uh, and those that are homeless. And they are really, really struggling guys. They have laid off over 40 people there. Uh, they're all self-funded. So if you have anything to give or if you have given to the Washington City Mission before, please think about it again. And uh, check out Scott Blasey live on the Clark's page or our Oneberg page uh, on Saturday evening. So it is pretty pretty cool watching him just dive into his music and tell the backstory. So thank you all for being on the panel. We're going to record this, so we'll be sharing this out with the agents, guys. I'm sure I'm speaking for all of you as agents out there. These guys are the best, the best. They're personable. They're willing to help. Don't hesitate to reach out to them. You know, they'll share. I mean, they wouldn't be on here in the first place if they weren't willing to share with you. So reach out to them. They're all over. Jen's in the south, Anthony up, up north, Brian downtown all around, and Jen and Steve out east. They're all over. So, guys, they can help you. And, again, just appreciate your time, and, and God bless all of you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.